Welcome to the third part in my series on MIDI guitar foot switches. In this video, I'm going to show you how I use it in Reaper, and you're going to want to see this setup because no one else has it. And I went through some other similar solutions for what I wanted to do, and um, nothing really cut the mustard. So here I am with my own solution. It's a bit complicated, but I'm going to walk you through everything. So what is it? Uh, ultimately, I wanted to use my MIDI foot switch, which you can see the video on how I built that, but this goes for any MIDI foot switch. I wanted to use it as a channel switcher for amp sims in my computer, and I wanted to be able to use any plugin and make a whole effects rack and change between completely different sounds. While I am showing this for guitar and that's how I'm using it, it could also work for switching through synths on keyboards or even different drum kits for electronic drums, bass sounds, you name it. Any instrument that you're working with multiple sounds within your DAW, whether it's just regular VST plugins or VSTi uh, instrument plugins, it will work. Let me just show you real quick how it works. I'm gonna play a little live demo here. I hope it's good. So in this case, I've done it all with multiple instances of Archetype Gojira and some other effects, as you can see on the mixer window. Um, so let's play something. <laughs> So there's a quick little demo of what this setup does. When I hit the button, it switches to a totally different effects chain. And that's awesome, right? Um, it seems like a simple thing, right? That's what I thought a MIDI foot switch was for. And it wasn't until I built one and started testing it out that I realized I needed a better solution because there's always some delay um, or that you can't record with it. There's always a problem. And um, I didn't want to deal with, say, a little delay, a gap, if I was gonna use this live, that's just not really acceptable. And if I'm recording with it, that's also not acceptable. So my goals for this setup, it has to be immediate, no gaps, no load times. When I switch plugins, it has to switch. It has to be seamless. I don't want any clicks or pops either. And uh, I also don't want things like delays to unnaturally cut off. It also has to not be reliant on using a specific brand of plugin or a specific plugin itself. I don't want to be stuck with one particular kind of plugin because it's the only one that works with MIDI. It has to be usable for live use or jamming at home, songwriting, as well as recording. If I come up with a cool idea, I want to be able to record it right there. And I want to be able to use this when I'm working on songs and recording stuff to speed up my workflow. So those are my requirements and it may seem simple, but the devil is in the details. There's a couple other solutions out there already that I looked at and tried before I came up with this. So let's discuss those and the limitations. First of all, I thought Neural DSP has great MIDI implementation in their plugins, which props to them for doing that. But when I switch presets, there's a lag time, there's a load time. And it, you know, I have a pretty fast computer. I think it's just a matter of the software. I don't think there's any way of getting around that. So preset switching in Neural DSP was out. Now, it's faster if I just turn on and off a single pedal or switch to a different amp channel. That works pretty well in it. Um, it seems to be pretty immediate, but I don't want to be reliant on those limitations. And also, I don't want to have to only use Neural DSP amps if I want to use this foot switch. There's also what I will call the timeline switching method, where you can use your MIDI foot switch to jump to a specific part in your project. And in that part, you'll have the automation to run whatever tracks you want. This does work as far as immediacy, and um, it's kind of a similar idea to what I have set up here, but it doesn't work with recording. The third method I saw involves having multiple tracks, 
that have different amps on them and you can automatically record arm those tracks and then use a MIDI button to switch to the selected track and when it's selected it will play through that because it has the automatic record arm on. This method is close to good but there's again a slight delay sometimes some pops between switching and if you are recording with it you're going to end up having a file that is broken up into a bunch of different parts and there's probably going to be some little gaps in there. So I don't like that method. It just didn't feel right to play it because there's little gaps when you ever use switch tones. And um, I just don't like that. And I don't like the prospect of recording a take and having gaps in it that are potentially unrecoverable. So after testing those methods out and being disappointed and looking all over the internet, I figured I guess it's up to me to come up with a solution, and so I did. So let's get into a simple setup and see what this method involves. Our first example here, we are going to build together, all right? So I'm gonna start by just creating a couple tracks here. Uh, let's call this one Guitar Bus, and it will be our Guitar Bus. I'm going to click that button to put him into a folder, and let's just set up a clean and a dirty track because we like to do that. I'm also going to make a guitar input track. And I'll put that one up top because it makes sense. So the first thing we're gonna do, let's just put some plugins on these. All right, so we've got a couple amps here. These are a few from Audio Assault. They don't have any built-in MIDI integration, um, but they're nice amps and uh, they're also very affordable. So uh, I've been enjoying them. So we're gonna set our clean amp to a clean channel, of course, and then we've got the uh, the Sigma on as a lead channel. So we've got our amps, that's good. Gonna close out of those. Now with this routing here, I'm going to set up a send to each one, okay? I am routing this to my clean channel and to my dirty channel. And I am going to do these pre-fader. Uh, that's all I'm going to do with these for now. This is just the simple version. I'm going to record arm my guitar, and I don't want it to be my voice. I'm going to go over to my guitar input. Here's my guitar on, and if I play this... I've got both my amps going on at the same time. Let's turn this all the way up, and I'm just going to throw a delay and reverb on this, because it's, it's cool to do that. All right. So both my amps are recording right now. And that's one key aspect of this puzzle here is that uh, the reason it's immediate is because all of your amps and effects are running all the time. Now, the main drawback to this is that it does eat up more resources on your computer. If you have a weaker PC or a laptop or something, you are gonna wanna be uh, careful about that and even even with my computer, it's quite powerful. This doesn't hardly put a dent in my CPU usage, but there is something called real-time CPU that you can see in your performance window. If we go to view, performance meter, uh, right here you see it says RT CPU. That's our real-time CPU use. And you can see even with just two plugins on this, um, of course I have my mic running through this, so a couple of plugins. Um, real-time CPU use is at 30%. If we go over about 80%, um, even maybe 75, you start hearing some glitches. Um, it would probably still be okay for recording, but it's not gonna be all that fun to listen to if you're jamming. Uh, so we're gonna have to do some optimization later, but I'm getting ahead of myself, uh, as usual. Don't worry about that for now. Right now, we've got two amps. How are we gonna switch between them? So the important thing, here, um, you're gonna need a extension for Reaper called SWS. It's a series, of a bunch of extensions really, and it's very popular for Reaper, so you probably already have it if you use Reaper a lot because, um, yeah, they're pretty popular. But anyways, free download. Look up uh, SWS extensions for Reaper if you don't have it. You will need it for this method. And I'm just gonna go into my actions window here in Reaper, and I'm gonna type in mute track all right and that brings up all these sws slash br extensions there's a lot of them the ones we need for this particular feature this setup is uh, save all tracks solo and mute state 
and pay attention to this. <laughs> save all tracks, solo, and mute state. There's other ones like save selected tracks. This is the one we want. Save all tracks, solo, and mute state. And then I've already got this routed to my MIDI controller. You're going to do restore tracks, solo, and mute state to all tracks. Make sure it's all tracks and not this one that says selected tracks. So restore tracks, solo, and mute state to all tracks. Uh, I have this set up for all six buttons on my foot switch. They all go to a different slot. I have six slots here and that is already preloaded. So when I load up Reaper, that's already there. Uh, I can do a new project like this and not reprogram my MIDI controller. All you do to add a MIDI function, by the way, uh, you go to add and this window comes up. You can just press a button. This is already bound, but you can see I press that. It comes up MIDI CC. You can do 21. Here's 20 and um, hit OK. So it's already bound to CC 20. Uh, whatever your controller is, you just press the button. For my clean amp, I want my clean amp on and I want my dirty amp off, right? So I'm going to mute this. Everything else is still on. Uh, since these are pre-fader sends, I'll turn my guitar input off so I don't have a dry signal. All right, so I've muted my dirty amp. Everything else is fine. I'm going to double click this. Now it is saved to slot one. And then I'm gonna go over, mute my clean amp, unmute my dirty amp, save that to slot two. That's simple as it gets. Now, you can see when I press one here on my foot switch, you can see it's a very quick switching right so we've made a very simple setup here and it only gets more complex from here so let's take a look at uh, what we want to do next with this. One problem you'll notice here, if I play on my clean amp and I have some delay on it, and I switch to my dirty amp, it's actually still playing on the other track, but you see my delay cuts off. Not a huge deal, but uh, I don't want it to be abruptly cut off like that. So what do I do to fix that? All right, now is where we get into a little bit more routing. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna set up input tracks. I'm gonna make two more tracks and I'm gonna have clean in and dirt in. All right, I'm just gonna put these up here. I am going to change the routing of this. So my input now is going to be routed to the inputs of those and they will be routed to the inputs of the amps. So we're doing a little, a little daisy chain here. Here is the routing window for my guitar input. Okay, this is where my guitar is coming in. I want to delete these first, so I'm not sending it directly to the amps. On my guitar input, I'm sending to track four and five here, my clean in and my dirt in. Those are then sending, they don't have anything on them, they're just sending over to the amp tracks but we're getting into some uh, trickier routing because remember we're doing everything in this by muting tracks. That's essentially the only control that our foot switch has. So everything has to be based around muting tracks in this. The reason we're doing this is so that when we switch between channels, reverbs and delays don't immediately cut off. They will stop playing because the input has stopped, but they will fade out naturally because we're not muting the amps now. We've switched from muting the amp tracks directly to muting the input tracks, almost like unplugging the guitar from the amp. This is important too, because we're playing guitar in mono right now, and I will cover double tracking in just a minute here. I'm going to take mono source one and send that to mono source three. And this one is going to be the same thing. And uh, two and four will be for our double track. So I've got audio one to audio three on both of these inputs. Now, on our clean and dirty amp routings, uh, I've got this receive 
from my clean input, and that is going to be receiving mono three, audio three, and sending to audio one, right? And so we're, we're going from audio one to audio three, and then back from audio three to audio one. The reason we're doing that is so that we are not hearing the direct signal that we would be on those clean inputs, right? This is important. So don't worry about it too much. Just remember, we're going to go from one to three and three to one. And then when we double track, we're going to go from two to four and four to two. And we can do this in stereo too. And we can go up to, you know, audio five and six or even more if you need it. Um, it works just the same way. But we just want to get them off of our main audio outputs. All right. Um, so now that we have that, it should work. Let me test it and hope that I did it right. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, what did I do wrong? Well, let's let's troubleshoot it. Let's troubleshoot it together, okay? What do I have? Oh, right. <laughs> this is a simple one. I forgot the routing. Okay. So now I'm going to go from 3 to 1. And now okay great so um and to verify you can hear my guitar through my mic but you're not actually getting any sound from those inputs so your dry guitar is not being recorded. The only reason you can hear it is through my mic. So there's our completed basic setup. It's ready to use now. I'm gonna record something and we're gonna do a quick uh, double track. So I can show you double tracking and recording and exporting. And then um, after that, we can look at some more complex setups and some other things you can do with this. Try to come up with a riff that doesn't suck and uh, record something. One more thing you're going to need before you get to recording this is a MIDI input track. So we're going to make one more track here. I'm going to call it MIDI and I'm going to set this to record uh, any MIDI. I'm going to put in all MIDI inputs, all channels. Okay, just stick that in here and uh, we're going to record our MIDI data that way. Now when I start recording too, I want to make sure that whatever my first channel is, I just want to tap that button at any point so that it knows it records that it's starting on that channel. Let's so just duplicate our guitar input because it's pretty much got everything we need. I'm going to delete the recording from that and then uh, go right into the routing. Now all we need to change here is uh, we're going to go from mono 2 to mono 4 just as I said earlier. Okay, mono 2 to mono 4 and then we're going to go over to our clean input and this second receive uh, is going to go from 2 to 4 and uh, this now I'm going to set to stereo. So this is going to set from both 3 and 4 to 1 and 2. And same thing with my dirt channel. I'm going to set this to um, 3 and 4 stereo to 1 and 2. It's important that uh, your plugins run in stereo if you're going to do it this way, though I suppose you could have separate left and right channels too. But as I mentioned, um, you know, you want to try to keep your plugins to a minimum uh, for performance reasons, if possible. You know, we don't want to sacrifice our, our tones, but we also don't want to just use excessive plugins and run out of uh, headroom on our computers. <laughs> um, I'm also going to, I'm going to rename my guitar inputs now, left and right, uh, so that I know which one is which, and then I'm going to go here guitar in left, I'm going to send all these left, right, and go into guitar in right, send all these right, okay. 
Now, let's record a second track. I'm going to uh, disable recording MIDI because I already have that information, and I don't need to worry about my foot switch at all at this point. I've already got my MIDI data, the switching is already set up. I'm just gonna play it. All right, so let's do it. What went wrong there? Well, I have our MIDI inputs, but we didn't have uh, the MIDI switching going on. So it sounded like it was just all one tone. Well, what we're gonna do here, pull up another plugin. Uh, this one you should, I think have, uh, if, you rec if you install the SWS extension, I think this comes with it, or it may be default in Reaper now. It's called MIDI to re-control path. Uh, it's just a stock Reaper plugin. You don't need to do anything with it, just open that up. And now, So when we've got something recorded and we want to export it or render it, uh, we're going to need to set up mute envelopes. And I've set up Control Alt Shift M as my mute envelope hotkey. I would recommend doing one if you're going to use this method because uh, you need to make envelopes more frequently uh, than than you'd be used to. Um, and M is by default is marker and Control M and Shift M and Alt-M all do different things. So Control-Shift-Alt-M is not bound by default, so that's my create mute envelopes thing. Mm. Okay, so you know what I forgot to do earlier? <laughs> the whole reason I have these sends set up uh, is so that my delay and stuff doesn't get cut off, but I forgot one crucial step. Okay, there's a lot of steps in this, I know. It might seem too complex, and I wish it was a little simpler, but I promise you that it's worth it. Um, you just have to remember to do everything. And uh, that's why when you set this up, you're gonna wanna save it as a, a template that you can you know, make others from, but you don't have to figure out all the routing again. Um, but also, learn the method here. Learn there is a method to this madness. Okay, so what we're gonna do here, uh, we've got our clean in, our dirty in, and those are the ones we actually want to use. So what we're going to do, my clean channel, I want just clean in, and I'm going to this time leave both amps unmuted all the time. So save all tracks, solo and mute state, slot one, reverse it here. Now we save all tracks, solo and mute state, slot two. Okay, and now we're switching here between our inputs. Great. So when I play this back, it should be fine. Now I'm going to set my, going to open up mute envelopes on these tracks and I'm going to right click uh, the trim button and set it to touch. Okay, this will record our mute states so that we can render the files properly. And this is pretty important if you wanna render your files. So let's just play through it and it'll automatically do it for us. Watch. So that's all we need to do there. I'm gonna take these out of latch and set them back to just the default trim mode. All right, so there we have the basics of creating a project, setting up these um, mute states, which allows for the channel switching, um, double tracking, and how to record and render this. For fun, let's go over to view track wiring to give us another view of how it's working. And this is a cool new thing they added in Reaper 6. And uh, I never really use it, 
but I kind of like it. I mean, visually, it might be fun for some people. So you can see we have our guitar in right and guitar in left, both sending to two outputs on the clean in and dirty in. Those are both sending to clean and dirty. So we've got our guitar main input. That is just our left and right master input. Then we've got specific amp inputs. And then we've got uh, clean and dirty amps, but you know, any amps we want. Now let's go and look at a slightly more complicated project and see what we're doing there. So here I am in a different project file, and this is the one I demoed earlier. It's uh, all based on the archetype Gojira from Neural DSP, which is a cool amp. But uh, as you can see from my mixer, I'm not using only archetype Gojira. And uh, I'm using, I've got all three channels set up here. And so you can see I've got my, my clean, the rust amp, the crunch amp, and the hot or lead amp. Okay. And then I've also got these other three up here. Now, what are these? I've got clean with reverb and clean with reverb and delay. And then I've got my uh, regular dry crunch channel. And then I've got the crunch with delay. Then I've got my lead channel dry, and I've got lead with delay, and uh, delay and reverb. So how have I set this one up differently? Let's go over to our wiring, because that's kind of fun looking, right? All right, so you can ignore this first green wire. That's a side chain input for my gate on my microphone, so you don't hear my strings when I'm playing. Um, so the first thing, we've got our master input, and that is sending to three channels. Uh, we are sending to our clean, rust, and hot amps. All right. And uh, those three you can see are going right here. And they are coming in just normally and they are being then sent out to uh, the reverb and delay. So rather than having it like I did last time where I had an input before the amp uh, with nothing on it, in this case I've got the it's routing directly to the amp, and then the amp is sending to another instance of um, Archetype Gojira, this time with just the delay. And I'll show you in the plugin real quick. Here's my amp, here's my clean amp. Uh, to save processing power, I have right-clicked on all these, disabled them. So I have, uh, I don't actually have any pedals going on here. I'm gonna just disable that. So I have the amp, I have the speakers. And uh, this one also has a compressor and a chorus on it. This does have a chorus in it. I'm not the biggest fan of the chorus pedal in Archetype Gojira. It's okay, it's not my favorite. I have this nice June 6 chorus, which is free and uh, emulates the Juno chorus, classic 80s keys chorus, it's fun. Um, so there's my clean channel and that is sending to another instance of Archetype Gojira. In this case, let me make this smaller. Okay, in this case, I have this channel with only the uh, time-based effects activated, and it has going to the reverb. That's my reverb. This one, make this smaller, is going just to my delay. All right, so I have a reverb and a delay track, right? And now this time, those are set up similarly to how I showed you in the last demonstration, where I have a verb input and a delay input my master input, which right now is just set up for single tracking. All right, so this is my guitar in. I'm sending out to my amps. Okay, you see the wires go here. And then you can see I'm sending from each amp to reverb input and to delay input. So here's my verb input from clean, send to delay input. All right, and then from the delay, of course, my reverb is sending to the actual reverb channel. This one, remember, is just sort of a host. It, uh, it doesn't have anything on it. There's actually no effects. The verb input is simply a routing thingy. And uh, I should also mention, as we did in the last example, uh, my verb here, these tracks are sending, in this case, from one and two to five and six. And I'm not sure why I needed to do that. Why did I need to do that? I have an answer for you. Not really. Whatever. So in this case, I am sending 
all of these to outputs five and six, which are then going from five and six back to one and two on the verb channel. So that is how my routing looks. Uh, these are all post fader and uh, my master input is pre fader so that that is off. And this way, uh, once again, I don't have any dry guitar signals coming through and uh, my reverb and my delay can fade out naturally. And since I have three amps and two extra effects going there, I can customize it a bit more. So I have two versions of each amp, dry and wet. My expression pedal here, okay, is linked up. Let me show you. Linked up in to feedback and tape saturation on my delay. And this is very easy to do with an expression pedal. You can do anything. And there is MIDI learn functions in Neural's plugins, but I find that when I bind them up, I get all sorts of weird glitchy sounds, and I don't know what it is, but um, I, it doesn't seem to work perfectly. So this is done through Reaper, and how I do it, I'm going to select, move my feedback knob, go up to this parameters, and it says last touched delay feedback, learn, click that, move my pedal, it's bound, okay, it's simple. So. If I play this, keep going forever. Pretty cool. Um, I have my little rust amp here and uh, I think you could actually use a little more volume but here is, uh, you know, just if you want to see it, you can see it. Cool. Same deal, same deal. You know, this is um, not really the important part of the uh, demonstration, but you know, I can have a little bit of fun here. I've been recording for an hour. <laughs> So um, the expression pedal, you know, I've, I've been playing with different things to do with it, and uh, there's a lot that you can do with it. I mean, as I showed you, you can really, you can set it, you know what, let's just do it for fun right here. Uh, I'm going to take my gain knob. All right, let's put our gain knob on expression pedal. Why not? Okay, parameter, learn, CC27, there you go.
You can turn it all the way off. <laughs> So if you want to unlink it, all right, then you go to learn. Okay, here it is. I have it there. Parameter, learn, remove. Simple. Now it's not doing it. Okay. What about the level? I mean, we could set this like a like a volume control, right? Parameter, learn, here. Okay. Volume pedal, right? Classic. It's going to clip my interface, though. Anyways, you figure out something cool to do with it. <laughs> I'm not here to show you what to do. Um, yeah, you can do anything. Yeah, literally anything. And it uh, doesn't even have to be a guitar-related plugin, really. You can use it to automate your compressor threshold or something stupid like that. All right. Um, okay, next up, the final boss. Are you ready? I hope you're ready. Looks nice and tidy, right? Does it? <laughs> it's a lot. Let's open up this mixer a little bit. Okay, so there's there's everything. All right. This is my super effects rack. And this one is going to maybe take a little bit of explaining, but uh, let's let me give you a demo first, and you can hear what uh, I'm doing with this. And in this case, it's not like three channels with some different effects on them. It's actually technically two channels, but I've got a lot of pedals going in front. So let me just play through the sounds and I'll show you. I hear something wrong. We'll fix it in a sec. Let's take a look at the track wiring, shall we? That's a lot of damage. Let's just uh, go through everything. So we have master input, okay? Again, that is our guitar input, yes. We are going to uh, sends here. We have one to my distorted amp, okay? One to my compressor input, one to my fuzz face input, one to my big muff input, one to my Big Muff output. That was the problem. I don't know if you heard it, but I did. Um, let's remove that. Okay. We don't want that. Um, master input. It's going to go away. Let me just check that because I care. Okay, back to work. 
So fuzz face input, muff input, HM2 input. Um, and that is all the inputs there. Then we have a reverb input, a delay input. Okay. So the way this one works, now I was running into this problem before. Okay. I set up a similar project where I had six different tones and each of them was completely like on its own. Uh, so if I wanted reverb on it, I was going to have, you know, track one and it was going to have reverb on it and it was going to have this amp and it was going to have these effects. All right. And then channel two would have whatever I want on that channel three. Each one would be completely isolated. It would have its own amp. It would have its own reverb and delay and blah, blah, blah. Okay. What I realized after setting up my beautiful masterpiece was that it did not run. And uh, the, the CPU usage was really low. So I was looking at the performance meter thinking, you know, what, what's going on here? And I'll show you this, even with all these effects, and there are a lot here. Um, let's go to performance meter. Come here. Uh, all right, performance meter. I'm using 5% five, 5 of my CPU, okay? And, you know, switching through these, uh, using very little of my CPU, okay? Nothing, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't hurt it at all. My PC is a beast. Uh, <laughs> but look at my real-time CPU use, okay? It is at 75%. That's, that's borderline. Now, I didn't hear any glitching going on, so we're, we're in the safe, we're in the clear. Um, if I were to set my input latency on my sound card higher, then uh, it would be no problem. I would have more real-time CPU. It's, I guess it's kind of like a buffer period or something. Anyways, if you overload that, you will end up having bad sounds. So don't pay attention to your CPU use. That doesn't matter. Pay attention to your real-time CPU. All right. You can also see all my effects here. Um, well, these are all my tracks. So you can see how much they're each using. Not that much. None of them are using that much. Okay. So the way I've got this set up. All right. Let's think about it. this setup has a clean amp and a dirty amp. And that's the only two amps. And each of them has a different speaker on it. Okay. I've got Ignite Emissary. I've got the speaker cap. I've got my dirty channel. That's got Archetype Gojira on it. I've got my compressor in, and I have this routed with a compressor in and a compressor out. Again, um... The reason I'm doing it this way was, again, because I was getting some interference between some of these input tracks when I was um, trying to render files. And um, you can start with one input and see if it works. Uh, if it doesn't, my solution was to have this go from the master input to the compressor in, which actually has the effect on it. And again, we're doing this little trick here where we're going from one and two to three and four. Okay, and then here we're going from three and four to one and two, and that's sending back to the clean channel. So we're going from input to comp in, comp out, back to clean. Okay, it's weird, but it works. And I don't have any, um, you know, any bad sounds going on, which is important. All right, so I've got a compressor going into the clean channel, and then the clean channel is uh, feeding out to chorus, delay, reverb. All right, that's sound one here. Sound two, I am once again going into the clean channel, but this time I have a fuzz face here. This is the blue face from Audiority. And again, I'm doing this fuzz face in and out thingy. Um, I did it for all of them because I, I just needed to, and um, otherwise it wasn't working right. Uh, okay, so I have fuzz in, fuzz out. This is my fuzz face channel, and I think there is a delay or a reverb on this as well, right? Yes, you can see my verb. Input. All right. And then channel three, 
This time I've got a big muff. This is the big goat from Audiority. And the big muff is going to a chorus. My psychedelic goat. <laughs> Alright, uh, channel 4 is going to just Archetype Gojira on the, uh, this time on the Rust channel, okay, with a little more gain. So that's my, my typical high gain sound, right? <laughs> Cool. Nothing fancy going on there. Uh, next one is uh, HM2 going into my clean channel once again. <laughs> Those only two of these out of six are actually on the uh, high gain amp. And last but not least is uh, the distorted amp again, this time going into uh, verb and delay for my slick lead tone. <laughs> And the delay on this one, okay, is something cool going on. So this is a uh, JS effects with an ugly UI. It's called JS Delay Floaty, okay? And this one is pretty cool. It's a modulated delay, but guess what? I have this warp, and this is like a weird kind of pitch shift, uh, weird thingy going on, okay? And I have this bound to my, my pedal here. What if we also bind filter cutoff for something a little more dramatic, okay? Let's do that, parameter learn, bang. Now I control both, the filter amount, the warp amount, and the filter cutoff. Let's see what that sounds like. like that as much because it's I'm getting some clicks and pops sometimes you'll find that when you're trying to modulate these things what about um, filter resonance let's try that one out okay cool now we're doing warp amount and filter resonance <laughs> Okay, that one again, I think I'm just gonna leave that one off. <laughs> we're just gonna keep it like that, okay? It's pretty cool. Um, and also anytime we're doing these auxiliary sends, I keep the mix percent at 100, of course, because I only want the delay there. <laughs> Thank you. 
I like that. It's kind of a cool shoegazy type effect. You get this weird warped delay. Uh, it sounds almost like I'm doing something with a, a tremolo arm, but I'm not. I'm just messing with the pitch of the delay. So as you can see with this project, despite the more complex routing, I'm able to have a lot of effects and a lot of different sounds and keep it as sort of neat and low impact CPU wise as possible. And that is because I'm only running two amps, two impulses, and then I've got a total of four input plugins and three output plugins. And from that, I'm able to do all these combinations and you can get really creative. And as you can see, I have a pretty wide palette of sounds here. I don't know if I'd ever use them all in the same song, but it's just sort of for, for fun and for demonstration. And uh, it's cool. I mean, I could, I could use them all, you know, maybe on an album. Anyways, um, so the other thing of note in this is that with our routing window, we can then mix the amounts of these. So we can balance the levels so that um, our tracks are each coming in at about the right level. So some like my HM2 is just much louder than uh, the fuzz face is. So I have it turned down here quite a bit. And we can also choose the amount we're sending to each of these things. So we can affect the amount of chorus and reverb and delay is on them. Now in this case, because I only have two amps, um, I could probably have another set of sends if I wanted to get complex with it. And uh, you know, there's probably a way to get more finely detailed, but it just requires so many tracks at some point. Uh, you can see I have these levels that are sort of sending how much of each of these effects I want. So even though my chorus, my verb, and delay have sort of a master volume that would control both amps, the amount that you send to each one via those inputs will change um, how much of each of those effects you will get on your amp. And you can see my clean channel has a higher amount of uh, all those verb, delay, and chorus effects than my dirty channel. All right, so um, I know this has been long-winded, and uh, I'm, I've currently been recording this for you know, only an hour and 14 minutes. Uh, time flies. It doesn't, uh, doesn't feel, it actually feels, it feels like it's been three hours. <laughs> I've been explaining this for an eternity. And it's only been a little over an hour, which means I might be able to edit this down to like 40 minutes and it uh, won't be so bad. Uh, okay, so I hope that you have learned a lot with this. And I'm going to put up a project file to everything. And, and I hope that I haven't forgotten anything. And, and I'm going to look back when I edit this and say, I wish I'd said that. But I think I've said a lot. <laughs> I think I've talked a lot. This project is really cool, this idea. And um, I'm not saying that because I came up with it. I, I'm saying that because I think genuinely this is a really good way to work. Um, now, would you want to use something as complex as this example? Probably not, and I don't know if I will use this particular setup for anything. I might. I mean, we'll, we'll see, I guess, how much of a pain it is to use. There's something about having these this many tracks in a project that freaks me out because I haven't even started on anything else. <laughs> and if I, if I then add, like, a lead track to this, I'm going to have another guitar track with another guitar amp on it or... Two. I mean, I already tend to have sometimes four different sounds in any given song, three to four, um, at least two, you know, for at least a lead and a rhythm channel. But often I'll have a clean or an overdrive channel and then a high gain lead. And my main rhythm channels, maybe two main rhythm channels. So in a way, this might consolidate some of that because... Well, I don't know if it will consolidate anything, but it will at least have it set up and easy to use. So I, I kind of prefer the uh, the second setup I showed you with the Archetype Gojira stuff just because it's it's very simple and there's less to worry about. But it's not quite as um, powerful as this setup. And uh, I'm going to play around. My plan is to basically make a bunch of purpose built ones and... Um, you know, have some various sized blank templates 
So I can have like a basic two channel thing, basic three channel, four channel, six channel. And uh, I will I will upload a bunch of templates for you. I'm going to make those and I'm going to upload a bunch of different templates for you. And you can just stick your own effects in them and hope that they work. Um, remember these actions, OK? You need to do this on your own. I cannot do this for you. Go to show action list, type in mute track. Go down to save all tracks, solo and mute state. Put in your slots there, one through six, and then bind up your MIDI foot switch right there. That much, you know, I cannot do for you. I, I have, you have to do that on your own. <laughs> Sorry. But um, everything else, I can give you the templates and I can give you the routing and, well, it'll at least be a starting point. Um, and I, I hope that, I hope that you have learned something from this. I know it's complex. It's complex for me. I never do, you know, I've, I do some simpler routing normally, much simpler. This has been really expanding my knowledge of routing in Reaper. And that's cool. I like that. Um, there's pretty much endless possibilities that you can do with this. And it's really up to you to come up with some cool sounds to put in it yourself. And what, what do you like to do? I don't know. Everyone has their own taste. Um, this is just my ideas. So I hope that you I hope that you've figured it out. By now, maybe you're going to have to play around with it yourself, and I hope that you can come up with some sounds and know what you want to do with it. Um, try out some different things. Maybe build some purpose-built ones, like a, you know, a couple of different vintage tones and a couple of metal tones and some, you know, crazy stuff with a whole bunch of effects. I don't know. Whatever, whatever is useful for you in, in your workflow. But I hope that some people can get something out of this because I think it's really cool. And um, yeah, no one else has done it yet. So if anyone else shows you how to do this, I'm going to say I did it first. <laughs> it's not copyrighted. Uh, you're welcome to steal my ideas. You're not stealing. Take my ideas and freely use them. Please do. That's why I'm putting this out there. But also, um, no, who came up with it? All right. Um, yeah, I don't really know. I'm tired. I don't know what else to say. I wish I had some grand uh, speech to give you, but I don't. And I hope you like it. I hope you have fun with it. I've been having fun with it. I feel like I've only scratched the surface of what I can really do with this. But um, but there's a ton you can do with it. You can do anything, anything at all. You can go to the moon. OK, so that's it. That's my big video. This is the most important thing I've ever said on the Internet. So I hope I've said it well. We'll find out. You'll find out if I didn't. Whatever. The idea is cool. It's out there. You know, take it. Go, go. You know, don't wait for me to sell it to you. It's cool. I promise you it's cool. It's really. All right. You can you know, you know, listen to me anyways. <laughs> all right. That's it. I've talked enough. I've spent an hour and 20 minutes rambling about guitar stuff. Please, um, please take my ideas and use them and have fun with them and uh, like and subscribe to my YouTube channel so I can make more videos and come up with more cool ideas to share with y'all because, you know, because I love you. So like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Mm -hmm.